there's the PAT4. Let's get it open and let's get going. And there's the power cord. And we'll take a look over pilot light. Make sure the pilot light's out. Power cord is out. Pilot light is off. Now we can safely begin working. We'll pull the screws on this side, then pull the screws on the other side. And we've lifted off the lid and we can see what we've got. We're taking a look at the hum on the phono part of the power supply. And it's really pretty good. At least on 10 millivolts per box we can't see anything. Just see if you look carefully a little bit of breathing of the DC voltage. Let's look at the power supply for the high level stage. That's got a bunch more hum and also a bunch more of the breathing. Let's see if we can get the hum to sync up for us. There we go. Might be nice if we didn't have quite that amount of hum. And the plug is out. And you'll see over here we've got the silver cap, and that's what we're going to be replacing with the Update My Dynaco Pat 4 power replacement. That electronic regulator, which provides really low noise, very steady voltage for both the high level stage and for the phono preamp, is going to replace the three section silver cap and a couple of resistors. And we're also going to change the way the wires get routed from the transformer through the diodes, because this guy has the diodes on the board. And the advantage there is we get a lot less loop area for the 60 hertz and the rectified 60 hertz, so we can definitely diminish the hum fields that we suffer inside the PAT4. Since we're working with a pre-assembled version of the PAT4 power kit, and you can buy either the kit or the pre-assembled version of the power supply replacement, we'll just print out the manual starting at page 11. And let's see what it says. Disconnect the PAT4 from the music system. Done. Unplug the power cord. Done. It says, caution, be sure the preamp power is unplugged. 120 volts can be lethal. 240 volts can be lethal. If this PAT4 were built from a kit, we probably wouldn't have that lovely color coding on the wires to the power supply. But in this case, rather than having to go with what the manual recommends, which is masking tape labels, we can just make a quick note about the color code. And in this case, the orange wires are the 17 and a half. The yellow wires are the 38 volts. And the black wires, of course, are the grounds. And the other wire here, well, we'll replace and we'll fool with that some that'll actually go away because we're going to take a more direct routing of the transformer wires. Let's get started. Let's unscrew these guys. Almost done. Come on. There's the cap. This wire is going away so we can just cut it. There will be some diodes left behind here that we aren't going to use anymore. So the next thing we want to do is identify these couple of transformer wires. They're fighting me just a little bit. But there they are and they go to this terminal strip. Once again, we're going to cut them quite close to the terminal strip to leave as much length as we can get. And maybe hard to see, but we'll do that. Okay. So now we have the transformer output wires. There's the two outside wires. And then the red-yellow wire is the center tap. That's going to eventually go to the place marked center tap on the board and we're ready for the next big step. So now we're going to attach the brackets to the PC board in the manner shown in figure four of the manual. 
And we'll snug those guys up and make sure they're nice and level. And then we're going to install it right here into the PAT4, just like that. There's the screw. And we go underneath. And... Ta-da! And if you notice, we had to just move those wires a little bit, but nothing's pinched, everything looks good. Power wires, we've got plenty of room for them. And it's time to start hooking up the input and the output power wires. Let's strip a little bit of insulation back. Don't need much, maybe a quarter of an inch is enough to get through the board and let us get to what we're going to need to to solder it in place. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, now we've got these guys stripped. What we want to do is twist them together because what that's going to do is it will minimize the stray hum fields that we throw around the inside of the box, and that's always good to keep things quiet. So there we go. And we'll hook up the CT lead first, and let's just solder that so it's not going to go any place. install the X1 and the X2 wires and we'll solder those guys. It's worth taking a look at the transformer wires. Notice how tightly twisted they are and that will definitely minimize the amount of hum fields that radiate from those wires. So now what we can actually do is make sure that our board is good. We can do that by powering up the preamp carefully because remember the cover is off. And measure the DC voltages that come on out. 37.60, that's close enough for me. 17.38, that's good. And then let's measure the other power supply. The negative 17 and a half. And there we go. So we're all set. This power supply is good and we can hook up the rest of the preamp. But first, Pull the plug. You betcha. So all the wires went in place in just a few minutes, but we do have one bit of Murphy's Law. This yellow wire for 38 volts is just a little too short to make the stretch. Well, I had some white wire and white's close to yellow. And we'll make it long enough that it'll be comfortable. And then we'll tin both ends so it goes through the hole pretty well because it turns out this was some stranded wire that I had. Let's measure the 38. Pretty close again, 37.6. 17.38, that's good. And let's just double check the minus 17 and that's good too. So we were successful. Let's check a couple other things to see the overall effect. Here's the 38 volts with a new power supply. If you notice, there's absolutely no ripple visible, even on 10 millivolts per box. Whereas before, we had about 10 millivolts peak to peak of ripple on the 38 volt supply. And if you notice too, there's no wander on it. It's just dead steady, which says it's an awful lot lower noise for the low frequency noise too. Here's the 17 and a half volts. Once again, we can't see any hint of ripple at all. And if you'll notice also, more importantly for the low level stage, it's absolutely dead steady. There's no wander at a low frequency. And now we're looking at the output of the preamp when we're in the phono position with no cartridge or anything hooked. So it's just open circuit phono noise. And it looks to be quite a lot less variation. It's about two boxes, about 20 millivolts peak to peak, and gone are a lot of the big jumps that were quite frequent going out to 30 and 40 millivolts, three and four boxes peak to peak. So I think we've made a great improvement here just by improving the power supply.